Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today on the Word Podcast. We continue our examination of the book of Ephesians. We are in the fifth chapter. So let me just do a little recap right here and then where we can set the context. Remember at the beginning of the chapter, the Lord is calling us to be imitators of God as beloved children and to walk in love just as Christ also loved us. So we're to walk in love with one another. We're to walk with love before the world, but particularly in the way that Jesus did to the point that he gave himself up for us. Verse 3, we saw that no immorality, no impurity or greed must be named among us. There should be no filthiness or silly talk or coarse jesting, nothing like that. But rather, what should be manifest is the giving of thanksgiving. We should be given of thanks in all things. And make sure that no immoral or impure or covetous person or idolater uh, thinks that they are inheriting the kingdom of heaven because they're not. Scripture tells us point blank that such a person will not inherit. So he says, let no one deceive you with empty words because, you know what, the wrath of God is going to come down upon people who participate in these kind of things. And he tells us, don't be partakers with them. Why? Well, you formerly were in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Now, that's a, an important phrase that's really struck me this time. This is in verse 8. But now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. So we've been told repeatedly to walk in the way of the Lord, to walk this way. Walk, walk. In other words, live out our life. As the light of the Lord. Then a little parenthetical statement in verse 9. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth. So the fruit of the light that we have in the Lord will manifest uh, goodness and righteousness and fruit. And then the last verse that we saw in the last episode was trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. The idea being that as we walk as light in the Lord, as we walk as children of light, then we will be able to discern. We will be able to learn what is pleasing to the Lord, what is acceptable to the Lord. Now, verse 11, we continue. Do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. So he's repeatedly saying, hey, don't have anything to do with these deeds of darkness and the things of the world, what you used to be caught up in. It's the second time I think in this chapter he says, don't participate, don't participate. Don't do it in these unfruitful deeds of darkness. It's one thing to not do it, but then we're called to something else, folks. But instead, even expose them. Okay, expose them. Let me see what the other translations say. The King James says, but rather reprove them. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? What do you think of when you think of reproof? <coughs> But it carries the idea of exposing, admonishing somebody, okay, rebuking them, reprimanding them. But the idea is that you bring it to where uh, an exposure where people see what's going on. We have a role and responsibility of exposing deeds of darkness, not just sitting back and going, well, they shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> so do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them, verse 12. For it is disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done by them in secret. Well, who are the thems? Okay. Well, the them are those that are participating in the deeds of darkness, those that are still living in darkness, those that have not received the light. He's been talking about them in this chapter. You know, the immoral, the impure, the idolater, those the filthy talk, the silly talk, that type of thing. He says, not only don't have anything to do with them, but expose them because it's just disgraceful to even speak of the things which are done by them. We are experiencing that quite a bit in our society today, that we're seeing more and more things that are shameful, which would never before have even been spoken of, which are now being worn as badges of, of freedom and badges of liberty. And it's just uh, sickening the perversion. So he says, no, we need to expose this. That's the reason you need to say, no, that is wrong. People say, well, you're judging me. I'm not judging you. Well, that's your opinion. It's not my opinion. I'm telling you, the Lord God says that is wrong. His word says it's wrong, whatever it may be. Okay. Now, verse 13. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light. For everything that becomes visible 
is light. That's sort of interesting, isn't it? If something is uh, invisible, you can't see it. And a lot of times it's because it's in the darkness, right? But when it's exposed, it's ex what brings forth the exposure is that light is there. So he says, do this. All things become visible when they're exposed by the light. We are the light of the Lord. He wants us to shine that light. He wants us to live that light. So verse 14, he says, for this reason, it says, awake sleeper and arise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. So he's quoting the Old Testament passage and he's uh, sort of a twofold thing that's being said here. He's speaking to those of us who are believers, I believe. And he's saying, get on with it, man. Let your light shine. Do this. But he's also saying to those that are in darkness, he says, you know what? It's not too late. You can come out of darkness into light. Literally, the Spirit of the Lord is saying, Awake, sleeper, come on, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. So verse 13 starts off with that ever-popular word, Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. So you see how he's repeated over and over and over of how we should walk. OK, you need to walk in this way. Don't walk in darkness. Don't walk in evil. Don't have anything to do with people that are doing that kind of thing. Rather, really expose it. Speak forth the truth. This is what the walk is. So often people think the walk is just, well, I, guess I haven't done anything good. I've been hiding in my closet. So that's a good walk. I'm fine. Uh, that is an incomplete walk. We as a believers are called to expose deeds of darkness, to speak forth the truth. Look how he describes it here. He calls us to be careful how we should walk, Un, not as unwise, but as wise in relationship to what? Verse 16 tells us, making the most of your time because the days are evil. Uh, King James says redeeming the time. That's where you get that phrase, redeeming the time. That we're making absolutely the best of the time that the Lord's granting us, the days that he's given us. But making the most of your time because the days are evil, Folks, the days are evil, and it's increasing in evil, and it's going to increase. I tell folks this all the time, to fret not. The Scripture tells us to fear not. Fear not. It is going to get worse. The Scripture also tells us that when you see the totality of it. The days are evil, and evil is going to increase. But we have a calling to make the most of our time in speaking forth the truth, in exposing darkness, in walking as light, okay? So verse 8, uh, 17, let me read this, and then we'll stop here and probably pick up here the next time too, sort of dovetails. He says, So then, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Ooh, well, that's sort of interesting. So he's saying a, a lot of everything I'm saying right here, notice this, so then, therefore, etc. In light of this, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. little juxtaposition there. You have understanding the will of the Lord on one side, and you have on the other side, what? Being foolish. Okay, Being foolish is not understanding what the will of the Lord is, not seeking the will of the Lord, not desiring the will of the Lord, but rather what we desire. Well, anyway, my time's up. But uh, before you recline upon your nightbed today, go to Ephesians 5 and read these first 17 verses right here and just say, Lord, what is it that you're speaking to me? Uh, thank you for your time. Again, I'm Dale. Uh, if the Lord moves upon your heart to help support these times, please do. I'd appreciate it. You can go to my website. It's just dalemore.tv, and you'll see the blog there. You'll see this podcast there. You'll see a method to help there. You'll see all sorts of things, Bible studies and that kind of stuff. There's some music on there we've done through the years. So anyway, uh, spread the word, and I'll see you next time.